Right then, a um, little video while we're in isolation of how the distributor head works on a Bosch VE and VP pump. So that's axial distributor pump, um, such as VP30, VP37, or the mechanical VE pump. So inside here, it's basically just a barrel. It's got four delivery holes part way through, a little spill hole in the bottom and it's got a fill port which is fed from this stop solenoid so if I just build this up quickly so as it sits in the pump it sits like that this is the control sleeve. This is controlled either by a mechanical lever on a governor or a eccentric uh, pin drive in the VP pumps that moves it. And ultimately that's your throttle and I'll explain about that in a bit. This is your cam plate. I don't know if you can see on here. There's a groove and a pin. There's a distance piece that goes in there to get the right pre-stroke. Um, but we'll just ignore that for now. That goes in there. That is driven by the drive shaft in the front of the pump at half crank speed. And as that turns, these followers or the profile is followed by four rollers uh, that are fixed inside the pump case and are only moved by the advanced piston. But for now, we'll call them fixed. So as the four rollers are on that, that's pushing four times a rev. Boom, boom, boom. So if I take those springs back out, I'll show you exactly what's going on. So when it's all in the pump, it sits a lot closer together. Inside this delivery head, it's such a good fit. So you've got four ports on the end of there and what they do is allow the fuel to come in through the fill port around because there's a annular groove in there which then fuel flows through there into here and up to this delivery port. So what's going on on the first stage, let's break it down into stages get rid of that as well, is it's coming along, the front groove is aligned with the hole in the body, the fuel flows in, into the plunger, and it can't escape because it's not lined up with the delivery valve yet. The pump rotates, it reaches the point on the camshaft where it starts to push, it push, pushes the diesel in, creating pressure, and it's turning as well and it lines up with one of the delivery holes in the head which then lines up with each delivery valve I have took one out but it's a four cylinder and as it's, as it's still turning and pushing the, it's creating pressure in the injection lines and when the injector gets to pop pressure it opens and now we need end of injection so how that's controlled is by this, it's called the control sleeve which is moved, I remember I said that was a throttle earlier this control sleeve is moved by the governor, um, controlled by other factors as well, but essentially by the governor, and in the VP pumps by the electronic governor, which is a small motor with a feedback mechanism and an external sh uh, eccentric shaft, sorry, um, which moves this. It only moves in the order of like two millimeters, really minute amounts. Um, so whatever I'm showing you here is greatly exaggerated. So as it's coming along, it's pushing, and as it's still pushing fuel in, this is obviously stationary, and that pushes past here, and you see that slot uncovered? That is called the spill port. Um, so as it's injected the right amount of fuel that you're asking for, so here would be sort of, you know, quite a lot of fuel, the fuel ceases to go up the injection line, and instead spills out into the fuel pump case. Now, if you were asking for less fuel, that'd be further towards. Have I got this right? No, sorry. 
if you're asking for more fuel it's further towards the delivery head because this has to travel further before it uncovers this port and if you're asking for less fuel it's further back because it only has to travel off of that cam plate a millimetre or so, even less than that before that spill port is uncovered which then stops the injection so I'll just go over that start bit again because there's a lot going on get rid of that for the time being I don't know how well you can see in there but four holes 90 degrees from each other in line with these about here a drain port here and a fill port right at the back right here this plug I've just removed temporarily and I'll talk about that later so it's remember it's filling in here from the top flowing up there which is hollow and then out here and going boom 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 to each cylinder because it's driven off of that cam plate like that boom 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 and obviously that's driven half of the engine speed so obviously four cycle power power stroke every two um, so as it's doing that that's obviously coming out of there oh spill spill so end of injection is constant until you start to move this but in reality this is floating around all over the place being controlled by the governor your loads your throttle shaft is obviously asking for more fuel the governor's pulling it back saying whoa we're over revving and that's what keeps it stable it's, it's governing itself it's governor um, so yeah the cam plate has obviously got four lobes because it's four rollers and it's a four cylinder the six cylinders have six lobes obviously because it's got to do six pulses the other thing is when you're because it's always obviously driven um, the relation of the pump to the engine is critical for timing because it doesn't matter how this is spinning or where it's at if you've got the pump like that it's not getting to the right point in the pressure stroke to open the injector at the right time so how you time these on the engine you can see the plunger in there that might can make a bit more sense as to how that's working when it's doing that how you time these up is that this plug at the back it's a funny it's like a trilobular thing it's a triangle but a hexagon sort of thing um, you have to have a special Bosch socket to take that off but all you have to do to time them is you take this mill 12 mil plug out there's a copper washer behind it keep that safe that's then sitting in there so you take that out you shove your dial indicator in there and you measure the lift on this plunger um, this is a scrap fuel head by the way, don't worry it's not a good one there we go so this part of the cam plate is flat so what you do on the engine that roughly equates to 30 degrees before top dead so say your roller is my little finger you get it to a point on there you put your DTI in the end of there, you zero it there's no lift happening on there in that degree of motion the indicator still reads zero you turn the engine over to 10 degrees which then gets it sort of on this cam profile and you're looking for well on a ranger in particular you're looking for 0.95 millimeters to 1.05 millimeters of lift on this plunger so you turn the fuel pump obviously this is turning with the um, drive shaft which is affixed to the engine but you're turning the pump body which has the rollers and everything in it which then increases the rotation and the lift on here so you turn the pump until you get that specified value of 0.95 to 1.05 and then you lock it all up there's a bracket on the back and two bolts on the front and that's how you set your static timing and that needs to be correct because everything else is done from there um, so that's nearly the end of the video I guess there's a couple of little bits and pieces I can go through these are return springs because um, as you can imagine if your engine's at 4000 rpm this little guy is spinning at 2000 which means it's doing obviously four pulses per rev so that's doing 8000 pulses per minute so these guys just help 
return the plunger as it's been boom, 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 boom. that helps it come back out for the next fuel stroke um, this control sleeve and it, well this whole head in general is uh, such a fine tolerance because it has no seals or anything it just relies on the close fit of the components to stop stop any leakage if you get a really worn one of these the engine will start up fine cold and then when it gets hot it will idle lumpy and you'll have trouble hot starting it and that's actually because the clearances in this have opened up and the diesel's pushing out um, it's not very common but it does happen and you can also see in here there's another little gauze filter um, in the inlet to the delivery head so if there is any little bits and pieces in the pump which there shouldn't be that stops it going into the delivery head and eating itself up um, the delivery valves I've taken one out to use on a project I made a little injector tester um, but inside these, these are like not an injector but they've got a spring and a seat and as the pump creates pressure which on a Ranger is about 1700 psi um, that lifts off the seat, the pin will lift off the seat shh, allows the fuel to go up to the injector which then the injector opens shh, into the engine and when it closes it stops the fuel leaking back so it's like a check valve, that's basically all they are um, that is your stop solenoid um, yeah, it just bolts to the back of the pump with four bolts and an o-ring. Um, that has got a thrust washer on there. And goes in front of the control sleeve. This is all off a, a dead EDC pump that uh, someone donated to me, um, which was off a WLT three so it's the euro emission one um, with the EGR cooler electronic pump PGR valve and throttle shutter um, but essentially it's a WLT everything else about it is the same apart from the pump put them back in there those springs I can barely move them there's a lot of force on this Obviously, because if you've got 1700 psi on there, you know that's that's some big stuff. Uh, direct injection um, pumps run even higher pressures, and um, the only reason these are so reliable is because they operate at quite low pressures compared to anything else. Yeah, I hope you learned something. I hope it's interesting for you. While we're in isolation, I thought I'd do a little video. Um, any other questions then give us a shout you can buy like I said a special Bosch socket for getting that off but you won't really need to